when I was a little girl, I was very sensitive. And my mom actually used to ground me from going to the mall because there was a pet store in the mall. And all I had to do was walk down the aisle or the, you know, the hallway that the pet store was in. And I would start feeling upset and worried. And I just, all I had to do was think about the poor animals in the pet store and I would hurt. So I know there are more people out there who are sensitive like I am and who have this kind of extreme reaction and really, really want to help animals, but feel this feeling and it's kind of overwhelming. And so today we're going to be talking about, you know, how to help animals in the best possible way uh, when you're really, really sensitive. <laughs> I'm going to help you by giving you the ways that I've learned how to manage that so you can help animals. And uh, that's, that's what we're going to do today. So let's see who's here. Today, we've got Safina. Hello, Safina. I haven't seen you in a while. Safina's in B open, so yay. Hi. Um, Jane says this is her. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, too. It's kind of crazy. Um, interesting, the comments are frozen. So if you want to write in your comments and say hi and say where you're from, what I'd actually like to know. Anna Maria is here. Hi. What I'd actually like to know is how do you help animals or how do you get hung up in helping animals because um we all want to help animals right anybody who's here watching this video anybody who's here live anybody who's watching the recording you know you want to help animals you want to be there you see the suffering but um you get stuck you get hung up what's the best thing to do and this is definitely what happens for me as well so robin says h <laughs> i bet robin meant hello <laughs> and i love that you guys are sending me lots of little emoticons there's my animal Hear her? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to my life with my dog, Tuka, who doesn't like anybody coming to the door or even walking by out front. And I'm not going to leave this live in the middle of the live to go tell her to be quiet, but there is a dog she doesn't like. <laughs> um, Jerry says, energy management. Okay, so Anna Marie says, I'll put this on. Actually, let me put this up here. So today, today we're going to help animals in need. What's the best way to help animals in need? And Anna Marie says, I can't even watch the TV commercials that are raising money to help these animals. I couldn't agree more. I know what TV commercials you're talking about, too. You're talking about those ones where um, the music comes on. All, here's the funny thing. All I used to have to do, and you guys all know the commercial I'm talking about, right? There, it's that commercial, the music comes on, and then they show the sad pictures of all the animals behind bars and starving, and they say, don't you just want to help these guys? Um, it used to be that all I had to do is hear the beginning few notes of that song, and I would run away from the TV. Now, this is back when I watched commercials. I don't watch commercials anymore. I stick to, uh, you know, on-demand stuff. But it, it was so upsetting. And to this day, even if that song comes on on the radio, it's still, I still big time. So Jessica says, the best thing you can do for animals is go vegan. That is absolutely an awesome way to go. Um, Kathita says, I go to pig vigils once a month outside Farmer John's slaughterhouse. Interesting, you guys. Okay, so Safina says, I went to put, I went to the SPCA to help out and left crying to the point of hyperventilating. It is really hard. So obviously, I'm an animal communicator. I'm a, an animal psychic. So I spend a lot of time working with animals. I spend a lot of time working with animals and their people. It's it's a it's a kind of a big deal job. We don't think it is. And, oh, that's so fun. It's for only for people who have, um, you know, who have a lot of time on their hands. Right. But it's actually not the work that the animals help us do is they help us work on ourselves. So so many of us who know this, we want to turn around and want to help back. I want to help that dog, that stray dog that I see walking down the street. I want to help the cat that I read about on social media. I want to help the lion over there. Like, I want to assist, but it's really hard to do if I don't have it figured out beforehand. So that's going to bring me to my first. Oh, we're going to go to Kelly. Um, Kelly says, 
I feel like I need to help monetarily with everything I see and I feel terrible when I do not. I cannot even look at rescue sites or ads. And you know, so can you guys, can you give me a heart if you're on that, um, give me a heart if you agree with that, that it's just really hard to be looking through your um, social media and see the stuff come up on social media, the stuff come up on different sites. Heart me if you are agreeing with that. Um, and I find that really basically anybody who's here agrees with that. So maybe we don't need to do hearts. I just think hearts are cool. Um, Cher, hi Cher, says, I volunteer at a huge adoption event in Rhode Island and it kills me for the ones that don't get a home. I cry all the way home. Okay, so the first thing that you can do to help yourself around this, and I, you're going to be surprised at what it is, is we need to compensate for the fact that we are sensitive human beings. Right. If you're here on my page, you are very aware of the planet of animals. You are very aware of how much they need. You're also very aware of all the sadness and the hurt and all the ick that can go on. You're also here because there's some part of you that goes with your gut, that follows your intuition, that knows that there's more to this world than just the 3D. So knowing that the first thing that you can do to start helping well with animals is compensate for the fact that you are as sensitive as you are by writing up a list of the things that you feel truly help with animals, but only writing this list up at a time when you are not activated, upset, worried, etc. So maybe you wake up one morning and you're like, I'm in a great mood. Okay, that's something to take advantage of. Sit down, write down, you know what? I really have always wanted to volunteer at this organization. I would really like to support this organization monetarily. You know, whatever it is, come up with your top three things that you're going to do that you know when you do them will support the animals and you feel good about. Does this make sense, guys? It's really important that you come up with a plan beforehand because we need to work around the fact that we are sensitive, loving human beings who sometimes make bad decisions when we are energetically, sorry, emotionally activated. But by that, I mean this. If I'm upset, if I'm having a bad day, if I hurt today, how well am I going to be able to help that dog? How well am I going to be reach out, able to reach out and help the, the cat behind my house? If I'm going, oh my God, I'm so upset. How am I going to make a good decision about what that cat really needs? You know, maybe because I'm so upset, oh my God, this cat needs to come inside. I need to do everything I can to rescue him. It's really cold out and here I go. And I'm feeling so terrible for him. But really this cat would hate being inside. And what this cat really needs is a nice place outside to live. But because I'm so upset, I'm going by what works for me. And what works for me is I want to be inside a cozy house. So now I'm unable to determine what's for me and what's for the cat. So we want to come up with that list of things beforehand that really helps us know, I already decided when I wasn't upset that these are the three things that are the top things that I can do. So that's thing number one. Oh, I love it. Cathita Marie says, I do that already. Perfect. Okay, let's go to thing number two. Okay, thing number two is be discerning. Now, here's the thing about thing number two. <laughs> my, my Facebook is weird. Okay, so here's the thing about thing number two. Um, it's be discerning, meaning you need to pick and choose where you focus your attention that is a safe and wonderful place where you know that everybody's gonna be in alignment with you. So for example, I don't scroll through my Facebook feed um, around election times, around like there's all these certain times of the year when I know, hey, there's going to be a lot of stuff in there that is of a lower vibration than I am. That brings me down. That makes me feel bad. So I am not going to interact with those things. I'm going to find those things that keep my vibration high, that I know make me feel good. It doesn't mean I'm not informed, but it means I'm not going toward those things that upset me. The thing I don't like about that commercial, the um, the commercial that comes on where everybody goes, oh, I'm so, uh, the, 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 the sad music and the sad animals, is that what they're trying to do in that commercial is they're trying to make you feel so badly 
right? They're lowering your vibration. They're making you feel so bad that out of desperation, upset, and fear, you give them money. There's so many better ways to do that. I would rather pair with an organization that is like, look at all this stuff we're doing. Look at this. Look at that. This is great. Da, 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 da. Right? So I want to pair with those people because they're staying up here. The animals they're working with are going to be up here. Everybody's going to be working together. So now we're coming together. We're raising the vibration. We're not dipping down and making decisions out of fear, upset, worry, hopelessness, etc. So be discerning is a big deal. I stopped watching normal television because I can't deal with the commercials. I stopped watching the news because I can't have that type of energy. What is, what is big news? Big news is always a bad thing, the hard thing, the rough thing. I stopped. I don't need that in my life. If I need to find something out, it will come to me and I trust the universe that the universe will bring it to me. So it's the same thing with my Facebook feed right? It's the same thing. Oh, Jerry here. Jerry says using the law of attraction. Hi, Jerry. Jerry is uh, one of my animal communication practitioners and Jerry is coming with me to Kripalu next week woo to teach animal communication. It's going to be awesome. So, hey, Jerry, I'm going to have a big dose of Jerry next week. Um, all right. So be discerning in who and what you surround yourself with. Oh, Kelly agreed. She says, I don't watch TV or news either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, if, you, if you're going to do this, set your intention that whatever you do need to know about the world will get to you, right? The universe will bring it to you some other way. Someone will mention it, etc. But, oh, Jessica says, love Kripalu. Yeah, <laughs> I love Kripalu too. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, so being, being very aware of what you're allowing into your life, into yourself, into your vision, into your environment is really important. If you keep things in your life that are bringing you down, let's say I'm upset. I saw something on the news. I'm feeling really bad. Now I'm scrolling through my Facebook and I see this thing about this dog that was abused and da, 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 da. What is it going to do to me? It's going to take me from being down here to even lower. And then how am I going to make any good decisions about how I help that animal? So being discerning, really important. The final one is my favorite, favorite thing. Nancy says, hi. Say, hi, Nancy. Oh, missed it. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> okay. So now, and this is my favorite thing, and you guys will hear me say it in my classes. When I'm doing private coaching, I'm doing it in my private coaching. When I'm doing it, when I'm doing any live webinar, anything across the board, this is the main thing, and it's energy management. I cannot help the animals if I am not taking care of myself. Energy management is making sure that I am calm, clear, and grounded, and noticing when I'm not and taking the steps to get myself back there. So that might be breathing, it might be yoga, it might be some of the tools on my website. Whatever it is, it's my responsibility to take care of myself before I go out and try to help any animals. No animal wants my help when I'm crying and I'm so upset and I'm hurting for the animal. The animals are like, what are you doing? That is not an energy I want to be around. They don't want my help. It's that same thing, um, you know, uh, on the airplane when they say, put your mask on before your child's mask. It's that same idea. If you're limping along and you're not feeling awesome and then you go to help the animals or you go to figure out which animal to bring into your home or rescue or whatever it is. If you do any of that without taking care of yourself, without managing your energy, you're doing yourself. And guess what? The animal, a disservice. Animals want us to be our best selves. They also use their own survival instincts but they survive, sorry, they said it wrong. They survive by looking at us and determining, well, what state is this person in, right? Oh, they're upset and worried. I don't feel safe around them. I don't trust them. So if I'm not in my best state of mind, of energy, <laughs> and I go and I try helping this animal, that animal is not going to be one around, not going to want to be around me, not going to trust me, not going to want my help because I am not ready to help. So, um, oh, I love this. Nancy says, your book is phenomenal. Thank you. I think she's talking about my animal lessons book. Thank you, Nancy. Um, 
Yeah, there's and definitely in there in my in my uh, animal lessons book, there's definitely information in there about um, energy management because it's in my animal lessons book. It's in my soul contracts book. It's all over my website. It's in my school. It's in my membership. Be open. So we're going to go back to um, Safina says, I find that my dog, where is it? I find that my dog, she actually leaves the room if I'm in despair. Yeah, so th this is a really important thing. Animals, whether they're ours or not, whether we want to rescue them or not, whether they're in our lives or not, they're constantly reading us, feeling us. Animals don't want help from us if we're not ready to help. If I'm in despair, if I'm upset, if I'm hopeless, yeah, they can comfort, but at the same time, how is it serving them to spend their time comforting, right? They want us to get ourselves together and be in this like awesome, wonderful place and then work with them and play with them and be with them. If you want to help animals in need and you are a sensitive person like me, first decide your plan beforehand so that if you go off kilter, you have a plan to stick to about you know what helps. So that, you know, if you're not writing on your plan, adopt every animal I feel bad for, then don't adopt every animal you feel bad for. And I'm sure you're not writing that on your plan. Be discerning. Only surround yourself with those organizations and those people and those uh, media sites, et cetera, that are working at the level you're working, that have the values that you have. Stay away from those that lead with the agony and the upset and the worry and the horribleness. I can't be around those. I'm sure you can't be around them either. And then manage your energy. Do a little breathing. Do a little Star Wars. Do a little heart magnet. These are all um, exercises that are on my website. Have a good time managing your energy so that you can be in your full power to be able to help whatever animals come in your path according to your little directions that you wrote for yourself. All right, guys, that was it. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.